In this episode, I'm going to show you everything that you need to build your very own lot size calculator in Python for MetaTrader 5. There's a few pieces of information that you need in order to complete this episode. The first one you want to look at is your stop loss. Now, if you don't know what a stop loss is, have a look at some of my previous episodes in the channel to understand how to go about trading and really reducing that risk. Your stop price then is the entry price for whatever you're looking to purchase when it comes to Forex. Now, this could be a market price, which is the current price of the market, or it could be a buy or sell stop uh, that sets a future price that you want to enter the trade at. Whatever it is, you need to know what your entry price is going to be. When it comes to balance and risk, we're really talking about how much of your money you're willing to trade and then how much of that balance that you have you're willing to risk. Now, I don't go into that in a lot of detail in this episode, but you do need to know what those numbers are in order to calculate your lot size. If you want to understand how you can use a strategy to start determining your stop loss and your stop price, check out some of my previous episodes where I talk about things like the EMA cross strategy, because that'll show you how you can use a strategy to calculate those signals for you. Once you've got that information, let's continue. Here's what we're going to be doing for the next four episodes as we continue building our MetaTrader 5 Python trading bot. Together, we're going to be learning the best way to place orders on MetaTrader 5, but in a way that is safe and secure and is going to protect you from loss. Now, when we talk about building these orders on MetaTrader 5, there's four distinct steps that we need to go through, and I'll show you how to do each and every single one of them. The first one is to calculate your lot size, which can also be called the volume. This is what determines the size of your order on MetaTrader 5. The next thing you need to do is to check your order. Now, what this does is it sends it to the MetaTrader 5 server without being an order and checks it. If there's any issues that it comes up with, it can't check everything, but it checks a lot of things. And if there's any issues, it lets you know before you attempt to place that order. The third thing, as you've probably guessed, is to actually place the order itself. And I'll show you how to do that, but also how to catch some of the really, really common error codes that MetaTrader 5 can give you and where to go if you want to check out what they mean. And finally, we want to wrap all of those pieces together so that your MetaTrader 5 Python trading bot absolutely nails the order placement in a way that is fast, efficient, and safe. Now, I've broken this into four separate episodes so that you can zero in on whatever topic you kind of feel like is going to be the most helpful for you. So jump into the description below if you want to see the links to any episodes, and let's continue. As you probably picked up from my little introduction about how orders are supposed to work on MetaTrader 5, you end up with a little bit of a chicken and egg scenario when it comes to talking about how to build them with code. The volume or lot size calculation needs to occur as part of the placing order function, uh, and it uses some of the same information such as your stop loss and your stop price. At the same time, you can't really place an order until you've completed the lot size or volume calculation. So what we're going to do in this episode is to go through the lot size calculator, also known as the volume calculator. And we're going to do that by creating a pseudo library, which for those of you who've been following uh, the series so far, you'll know that I love these little library functions. They just make your code so reusable, and that can be really, really handy when you're building more and more complex trading bots. So head off and create that file called helper underscore functions dot pi, uh, and we're going to add the rest of our code for our lot size calculator here. Now, You'll probably notice that I use lot size and volume interchangeably throughout this episode. When you're talking about foreign exchange, it's very frequently called lot size, but you will find at times references to calling it the volume. Uh, I'm sorry for the confusion there. Unfortunately, that's just the way that things are. And so I try to use them interchangeably to kind of get everyone used to that kind of concept. Okay, so let's head back to our helper function and actually do some code. So we start off by creating our function, which shouldn't be uh, overly surprising when it comes to the name. Once again, really using that pattern, uh, Pythonic pattern of labeling everything really, really clearly and making it really, really easy to read. That's just going to save you so much time uh, in the future. When it comes to calculating the lot size, there's a few pieces of information that you're going to need. You're going to need to know your balance, which is the total balance that you're trading from. 
Then you need to know what your risk amount is, which is the percentage of your balance that you want to trade expressed as a decimal. So 1% is 0.01. .01. You then need to know your stop loss price, which is the price at which you will uh, exit the trade if it's not going your way and declare a loss that kind of reduces your risk. Uh, and then we're going to look at your stop price, which is the entry price um, that you want to enter the trade with. And then of course you need to know what symbol you're actually trading. As with all of my functions, we're going to go ahead now and add in all of the comments uh, that we need to describe to ourselves what this function actually is and what it's there for. Now, one of the weird little things that I'll just point out while we're doing this uh, stuff here, if you're listening, you can just keep watching the code. Um, when it comes to the lot size calculation, it's slightly different than when you're looking at stocks. When it comes to stocks, typically what you want to do is you just get your, you know, your balance that you're risking, you multiply it by whatever leverage you have, and that kind of gives you, you know, I've got $100, 100 to 1 leverage, I'm going to buy $10,000 of this stock. Forex is a little bit different, hence the reason why you get this lot size calculation that has to happen uh, every single time. All right, so our balance, our risk amount, our stop loss, our stop price are all floats. Um, we will uh, clean them up just in case people pass us a string. And then the symbol is going to be a string of the symbol. And ultimately, we are going to return whatever the lot size is. All right, so we have our balance and we have the amount that we want to risk. What we then need to do is to convert that <clears throat> into like an actual dollar value of what we're going to risk. So if we have $10,000 and we want to risk 1%, we need to calculate what that 1% comes out as. Now, for this particular example, I'm just using a static balance amount, um, as you'll see in future episodes. But this can be really, really handy if you want to develop your own compounding function, which is one of the things I'll do in a future episode. So the amount to risk is simply the balance times the risk amount. If you want to be really uh, clever, you could like allow the risk amount to be presented to you as an integer percentage. Um, for our purposes, I've just said that it needs to be a decimal to get started. Okay, now, for those of you who are well versed in MetaTrader, uh, when you're trading a raw account, they'll often denote it with a dot A or a dot I, depending on what broker you're using. I want to make this as generic as possible. So the next thing I do is I simply take the symbol, I pass it through a little string split function, and I just take the actual, you know, USD JPY without the dot A or the dot I or whatever your particular broker needs to use. That just means that the code can be applied whether I'm using the IC markets version, the Blueberry markets version, the Abril markets version, whatever. Now, because of the way that Forex works, we have this concept of a pip size. Um, and it's kind of different for a few different symbols. So USD JPY has a pip size of 0 0.01. In contrast to something like USD CAD with USD to the Canadian dollar, which has a pip size of 0 0.0001. So we need to account for that in our lot size calculator. USD JPY always catches people out. So to do that, we're just going to declare the pip size in there, if we go through our if statement, we say if symbol is equal to USD JPY, um, here's what the pip size is. Next, we figure out how many pips are actually in the difference between our entry price and our stop loss price. And we calculate that as an absolute value. As you can probably figure out, if you are doing this with a sell stop, it'll be a negative value. And you can't really <laughs> place a trade for a neg negative amount of money. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny, but you actually can't. <laughs> so we just make that an absolute value. Then we go ahead and we calculate the pip value, which is the uh, amount that we're risking divided by the number of pips that we're going to be risking against. And because we have the USD JPY as the counter currency, we're going to go ahead and uh, put in an exchange rate. Now, you could go ahead and like query your MT5 again and say, please give me the exchange rate for USD JPY because I want to add this you know, to my function. Uh, however, I believe that it's just as simple to use your current entry price for what you're trading. 
And the reason for that is, is because when this trade is executed, if it is executed, that is literally defining the currents, the price that you want to enter at. So that is the exchange rate. What we'll look at in future episodes outside of this kind of look four series group is the ability to then, if you're trading, like let's say you've put Australian dollars into your account and now you want to trade the USD JPY, how do you go about converting into US dollars first? That's a separate issue. But for now, we just want to, you know, make sure that we've got the counter currency sorted. Then we want to have a look at our raw lot size. Okay, so that is the basically just the the lot size without any kind of things done. Now, because we're using computers, we see you know quite large 32 or 64 bit integers, depending on what size system you're running. Um, you end up with these like massive decimal values. Sometimes they can be like nine or 10 decimal values long. The problem you have there is that if you present that to MetaTrader 5, it's just going to reject it and say, I don't know how to you know work with this many decimals. So what we go ahead then is right before we return the lot size calculation to our user or to our function, we go ahead we first of all make sure that it is a float. It should be by default, but this is just a really simple way uh, to make sure. Then we round it to two decimal places. Now, one of the things that I really want to make clear here, and I've run into this when I've been trading with really, really small balances, maybe with a new algorithm that I'm just testing out. If you have like a balance of 500 US dollars and you're trying to trade a currency and you're particularly working with very, very tight uh, spreads and ranges, uh, sorry, very large spreads and ranges, you will find that this lot size calculator really can be a problem because if, for instance, you have a lot size of 0 0.005, it's going to round it up to 0 0.01. In practice, what this is going to mean is that you're actually trading almost double what you're risking. And when you get into the algorithm theory, uh, which, you know, again, I don't really cover here, but when you look at algorithm theory and you start to look at your risk, you know, suddenly that really, really kind of small lot size that you're trading on is suddenly blown out by this, you know, rounding up. Unfortunately, you have to present the values uh, of this size to MetaTrader. So really your only solution is to trade with a larger lot size or just accept that your risk calculation is going to be a bit skewed. That's particularly relevant for small lot sizes. Okay, now just at the end there, you saw me put in a quick little check if the lot size is greater than 10. That will happen if you're trading those really tight ranges. So you're just going to blow out your lot size or if you're trading a very you know large amount of money. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in a different currency. Now, this uh, currency is, again, still, you know, the USD dollar first, but this one is going to be the Canadian dollar because that has a different pip size. And I just want to show you what that kind of looks like. Okay, so you can see there, I declare the pip size to be 0 0.0001 rather than 0 0.01. Then the rest of the function is largely the same as the USD JPY. Once again, get an absolute value. Okay, then we get our pip value.
Okay, now you can see here that what we need to do is we need to determine if whether or not uh, we're going to add in our exchange rate. Because it's USD first, we will. And then I've already put in that next line, the raw lot size. And then that just goes straight back into making sure it's a float, rounding it to two decimal places, making sure that it's not greater than 10. To make our code a little bit more robust, I'll add in a catch-all else statement at the end. Now, I'll leave it up to you if you actually want to add this. Um, it can be a little bit risky because you're basically saying, by default, do these set of actions. And that might be quite dangerous uh, depending on you know how robust you want your code to be, how many symbols you're trading, and so on and so forth. I'll leave it in here just to demonstrate it, but I really recommend that you make sure that you only uh, trade symbols that you actually you know, have gone through and done for yourself. Now, this is going to be a standard calculation. There's no need for the exchange rate. All right, so our pip size is going to be 0 0.0001, which is the kind of like this, the, the normal one, or I guess the most common one might be the, the best way to put it. Um, so you things like your Bitcoin and Ethereum that you can now trade, uh, they, they have a lot of uh, pip size of 0 0.01 themselves. Uh, anyway, and then you just go through and do your stop pips integer. And we calculate our pip value. Get our raw lot size. And away we go. In the next episode, I'll show you how to place an order on MetaTrader 5 with Python.